slides of the lymphoid, I always believe that cartilage and lymphoid, I mean if you are running out of time and in the histology you just have to read two things. Now my very strong recommendation to you is that go with the cartilage and lymphoid. I mean rest are also important, I am not saying, but these are the, you should be your primary target in your, in your general histology. So guys, this picture here is a picture of the lymph node. So let's see what are the features of the lymph node here. First of all, you can appreciate this thick capsule present in there. And the unique feature of this slide is that deep to the capsule there is a sinus which is called as a subcapsular sinus. We have this space deep to it called as subcapsular sinus. You can call it subtrabecular or the subcapsular sinus. Lymphatic nodule. These are the lymphatic nodules present, predominantly having the B cells. And these lymphatic nodules are present in cortex and only in the cortex, guys. This portion here, from till here till here, this is the cortex part. Where the lymphatic nodule is present, this is the cortex part here. And this rest, everything here is the medulla. I am writing M for the medulla here. So we can clearly divide the slide of a lymph node into the cortex and medulla. And the lymphatic nodules are present only in the cortical or the cortex part here. In between the cortex and the medulla, this zone here is called as a paracortex. This zone here is the paracortex. That is the paracortex. If in the lymphatic nodule, you can see the germinal center also. We all know that feature that germinal center is present and when these cells mature, they move toward the periphery. So we have a dense peripheral part of this lymphatic nodule and the lightly stained central part which is having larger cells but less number of cells. So it is more lightly, it is lightly stained. And because these cells are moving toward the periphery like this, so we have a center in the between that is called as germinal center, lightly stained germinal center in the active follicle. Lymphatics nodule, they predominantly have these B cells in them. And the T cells are the one which are present in the paracortex. So if the question is asked, there was a question asked that what is a thymus dependent zone of the lymph node. Thymus dependent zone of the lymph node is what? That is the paracortex. T cells, you know T cells are stored there. So thymus dependent zone of the lymph node is a paracortex which is the junction of the cortex in the medulla. In the medullary region, what you will see guys in the medullary region, you can see these, uh, we have medullary cords and medullary sinuses. This is medullary sinus here. And then we have the random cluster of the lymphocytes present there, these are called as medullary cords. Cords and sinuses, cords and sinuses are the feature of the medullary part of the lymph node. What is cord? As I said, these are the random arrangement of the lymphocytes, not in a circular manner like this. And then in between we have these endothelial lined blood spaces here, that is called as a, the sinus. These are medullary cords and this in here inside here, that is the medullary sinus cords and sinuses. But remember that that is an important point that we do have lymphatic nodule present in there and that lymphatic nodule is just located only in the cortex part, the cortex part. So this is about the, the lymph node, presence of the capsule, we have a subcapsular and subtrabecular sinus, the cortex is the one which is having a lymphatic nodule, we have a paracortex which is a thymus dependent zone and then we have a medullary region where we have medullary cords and sinuses present. Next in the line guys, the next slide in the line is the slide again of a lymphoid tissue but this time you are looking at a slide of a spleen. Now it is always good to first look at the differentiating feature. What is not here? What is not here in the slide of a spleen that there is no cortex or medulla. So you cannot divide the slide of a spleen into cortex and medulla. No cortex, no medulla in there. But we definitely have a lymphatic nodule. Now obviously this, let us say this whole thing is a lymphatic nodule only. Lymphatic nodule is present. Whether it is a active lymphoid follicle or inactive lymphoid follicle, the one unique feature of the slide of the spleen will be that they have this splenic arteriole present inside. The presence of splenic arteriole, if it is an inactive uh, lymphoid follicle, then you might see this arteriole present in the center. 
but when the growth takes place when the germinal center is formed this blood vessel is pushed toward the side here so you can see in this like it is pushed on the side here this one in this also you can see the blood vessels are present on the side here also you can see the blood vessel is pushed on the side so we call them eccentrically placed splenic arteriole eccentrically placed splenic arteriole so that is a unique that's a unique thing in the slide of a spleen that a lymphatic nodule which is present is having a splenic arteriole inside Lymphatic nodule is also called as the white pulp part of the spleen. Why white pulp? WBCs are there, so we call it a white pulp region here. And splenic arteriole running through the lymphatic nodule is representing that we have a closed type of circulation there. Now, within the lymphatic nodule, the blood vessel is present, which is definitely an example of a closed circulation. So, splenic arteriole is an indication of what type of circulation? The closed circulation. But guys, what happens is when these blood vessels, when this arteriole that comes out into the parenchyma, out of the, the lymphatic nodule into the parenchymatic region, they splay their blood into the parenchyma and that's why you can see this red tinge present all over. Can you see that? You can appreciate that red color present in between. That's because of the RBCs are over there and that's why it is called as the red pulp. Because of the RBCs floating in there, that is called as a red pulp and red pulp is an indication of what circulation? open circulation is also present in the spleen. So we have both type of circulation in the spleen, the close as well as open. Splenic arteriole is an indication of a closed circulation and having the uh, these RBCs present in the parenchyma because the blood, blood displayed into the parenchyma is an indication of open circulation. Also as I said because there is no cortex in medulla, so these lymphatic nodules which are present in there with the splenic arteriole are placed everywhere. We do have these lymphatic uh, uh, this lymphatic nodules present everywhere. Unlike in the lymph node where they were present only in the cortex, here there is no cortex medulla, so they are everywhere in the parenchyma of the, the spleen. The next important slide in the picture here would be the slide of the thymus. That's another lymphoid that we are looking at guys, the slide of the thymus. Now once again let's compare in there. What is not there? This time there is no lymphatic nodule. Lymphocytes are there but lymphatic nodules are not present. We do have a cortex in medulla also but see there is a difference in there. The difference is that entire lobe of the thymus is divided into lobules. We have so many septations. Look at this white color in there. There are so many septations and these septations, these are all connective tissue septae and these connective tissue septae are dividing the lobe of the thymus into lobules. So we have various lobules present in there. And what you see in a lobule, look at this if I just mark like this is one septa, small septa in there, there is another small septa that you can appreciate there. And because of this incomplete septations, the cortex is divided. So this whole cortex, this is cortex, guys. I am writing C here, cortex, this is cortex, this is cortex here, this is cortex. So cortex is divided by the incomplete septation, but the medulla is common. Look at this, that's a common medulla for these multiple cortices. So that's a feature that you see in the, uh, in the thymus that we have cortex and medulla, but we, it's not that we have a common cortex and medulla for the entire thymus. Thymus is divided into lobules, so we have small, small lobules present in. Let's say this is one lobule if I mark it for you. This is one lobule you're looking at. And in a lobule, we have a incomplete septations dividing only the cortex part, but medulla is common in there. But one most important feature of the, of the slide of the thymus would be that in the center, although it is a very low magnification, but you can see in the center in the medulla, you will find the thymic corpuscles or so called Hessel's corpuscles. Thymic or Hessel's corpuscles. Thymic corpuscle or Hessel's corpuscle. If I tell you a bit about it, Hessel's corpuscles are like we have a, a center of a hyaline mass. It's like a central hyaline mass will be there. And that is surrounded by these dying epithelioreticular cells. That's how a Hessel, Hessel corpuscle will look like. We have a central hyaline mass, which is having a very uniform uh, staining. And then we have these the RE cells, the reticuloepithelial cells or you can say epithelial reticular cells are the one which are present. The RE cells are surrounding, the dying reticular epithelial cells are present in there. So the older the person gets, they have more number of thymic or Hessel's corpuscles in them. So that's about the three important slides from the, uh, the lymphoid system, the lymph node, 
spleen and this is the thymus here. Then the lymph node, uh, as we said, the main feature is look at, uh, look for, directly look for the capsule and the subcapsular sinus over there and cortex and medulla can be cl clearly seen and lymphatic nodule is present only in the cortex. In the spleen, we had the lymphatic nodule present everywhere because there is no cortex and medulla. The unique feature over there is a splenic arteriole. In the slide of the thymus, you will not see uh, what you say lymphatic nodule. We just have the, uh, the septations which is dividing the entire thymus into the small lobules and then we have a common cortex, uh, the, the cortex divided by the incomplete trabeculae and the medullary region is common having the Hessel's corpuscle in them. 